Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I would do a quick little video sharing the, just the story about how I got started. Um, I've briefly kind of trickled into it and mentioned it throughout my channel but I don't think I've actually ever really sat down and talked to you guys about it from like how I got started and where I'm at today and some of the things and the challenges in between. So today I thought it would be helpful to anybody out there who especially is an aspiring blogger um, or YouTuber um, slash personality, Instagrammer, whatever, um, that I would sit down and just give you guys some advice. Let's do this. So for me it actually started out as a hobby. And at the time, my blog was called spazattack.com. And my nickname has always kind of been Saz. And my sisters always joked and call me Spaz because I'm kind of ADD all over the place, always super energetic. And it's hard for me to complete a sentence without starting a new sentence, you know? I just called it that because I wanted it to be a fun place where people could spaz out over like some of the things that like I'm currently obsessed with. And then I realized halfway along the way that spaz actually means something really inappropriate in the English language. And I'm not going to say what, but I don't know if that's true or not. But any English people out there, do you know perhaps what I'm talking about? To be honest with you, I started my blog because I was really bored. Like I grew up in a more traditional Kurdish household. So my parents were more like on the Middle Eastern side of being strict and I couldn't always go out and hang out with friends. So for me, I always try to think of like creative things to keep me busy. And so I knew by starting a blog, oh, my hands were gonna be full. It was um, March, 2011 when I was sitting in my room and I just literally said, I'm gonna do it. Like I'm just gonna flip the switch and I'm just going to start a blog. Like how hard could it be? And then, Probably two years into it, um, it was still a hobby for me. I was in college now at this time, and I had changed the name to Spaz Magazine. So I kind of rebranded it from Spaz Attack to Spaz Magazine. And Spaz Magazine was more of an editorial style blog. You know, I graduated in 2012, and shortly after that, in January 2013, I was like, I'm gonna move out to Los Angeles. And I moved out here with just the agenda of believing that I was gonna get a job in television. Like, I had that much confidence in myself. I was like, you know what? I have a really great demo reel, but trust me, when I came out here, I was like a small fish in a big pond. I could not believe how competitive the market was, especially for TV. I knew that I needed to focus if I wanted to become a TV host. So I told my parents, let's make a deal. If you guys support me for six months while I'm out there, um, I will try my hardest. I'll give it 110%. And if I don't, I told them I'll move back to Texas and we'll just pretend this thing never happened. I think that in itself motivated me to just hustle. Literally what happens in LA in one week, I feel like it takes most parts of the world like three months to catch up. Like New York and LA are so fast paced, especially in this career. Every single person that I met, I really tried to learn something from them. I totally remember the day when I finally just said, okay, this whole hosting thing is maybe not the path for me. And this was probably like close to the six month mark when I knew that my parents were about to potentially cut me off and say, come home. So there was so much stress, so much anxiety from that. And then I remember having a moment when I went into my bathroom in my old apartment and I just started crying my eyes out. And I just was like, why? Like, I know I have what it takes. Like, why aren't any doors opening in the TV world? Like, why can't I get an internship at one of the major networks? Like, why can't I just get my foot in the door? I was so discouraged. I felt defeated. And, you know, worst of all, I just felt like, I wasn't good enough. I started questioning like, am I not pretty enough? Am I not plastic enough? Like, why am I not able to have a breakthrough? And this is usually fun fact about me. Like when I literally feel like my hands are tied and I, there's nothing I can do, that's when I literally get on my knees and I just start praying. It's crying my eyes out and I just prayed out loud and I was just like on the floor like, God, like what's going on? Like, tell me, like I'm so confused. Like. What do I do? Like, am I supposed to move back to Texas? Cause that doesn't feel right. Or am I supposed to like focus on something else out here? Like, what is it that I am supposed to do? And in that moment, I am not joking. I heard it as clear as day. And I heard God's voice telling me, you need to focus on your blog. And honestly, I didn't like hearing that. 
because my blog at that time was so not polished. It was not updated at all. It was a mess. I knew that I had to basically tear it down and renovate it. Thinking about that just was so exhausting. And so when I heard God telling me this, I was like, ugh. The easier route would have been, I go to an audition, I blow them away, and I end up getting a salary job and I'm set. And I just, that wasn't what I heard. I'm the type of person when I really hear something like spiritual, like happening in me, nine out of 10 times, I like 100% like have to just listen because I know that if I don't, I'm gonna end up going in circles and I'll end up right back where I was meant to be. I told myself, okay, fine. I'm gonna take this whole blogging thing seriously, I guess. And I remember that night I sat and looked at my website and I just said, OMG, I am literally taking the long route to success and this is going to be so exhausting, so overwhelming. I know nothing about this world, but it's what I feel like I need to do. I was really, really passionate about working in front of the camera to tell a story and to inspire people and that's what I that's why I went to school to to study broadcasting was to share the people's stories and things like that. So I felt like that dream was crushed and it was taken away from me and it was like going through a bad breakup, I guess you can say. And even though I was now like looking at my blog and sort of kind of focusing on it, I was still getting over the loss of like, okay, my hosting career is like gone. Like, and it didn't even, st it didn't even start. Like I didn't even get to like try it out. Like it's gone. I told Steve about this revelation that I had in the bathroom and I said, you know, I know we were just shooting pictures like for fun and stuff every now and then, but I really think that I need to like focus on this for real, for real. He was motivated to kind of help me and he knew like there was something there because this was around the time when the social media world was really starting to rise. And so we decided like, let's just go for it, head in and let's see what happens. And like, who knows, maybe this can become like a paying gig for both of us. I mean, Stevie has his own unique story. I mean, he, was working valet when he moved out to LA. He was working at Whole Foods. He was kind of going through a similar feeling of heartbreak, I guess you can say, because the acting world is even more competitive, I feel. You know, here we were, two ambitious Texans who came out to LA to pursue our dreams, kind of like everybody else does, and we really got crushed. And so I told Steve, I was like, look, I think I have a plan um, for how we can make money. You know, I have this decent little following and I think if we really focus, we can make some side money from this blogging thing. All I need from you is to take my photos. I had this little T3 Canon Rebel camera and I was like, let's do this. You know, this is getting really long, but I just feel like I really do wanna like tell the, the full story. So um, I hope you guys are like, have a cup of coffee and like popcorn as you're watching this video. So what I did was I decided to get like a Word document and I created a PDF that said, you know, Spaz Magazine, Get, get featured, you know? And so what I was doing was I went on Etsy. I don't know if you guys are familiar, but Etsy's a really great online store to find like really unique handmade pieces as well as like startup companies who are just trying to get their stuff out there. And I would notice like really cute like jewelry and like handbags from these like literally mom and pop shops. People who literally have like a hundred followers on like the Instagram or don't even have an Instagram. And I knew that if I targeted that audience, I could give them something really great. I could give them exposure. So what I did was I created a press kit and I basically gave them a menu of options. So like a blog feature with like a social shout out, all across the board. And I think at the time I charged like $250, which trust me is not a lot at all. But at the time I was like, OMG, like that's the most that I was charging. And that was kind of my like premier pricing. And what was really great was these brands loved it so much. They would come back again and they would say, hey, this time we're gonna give you a free bag and let's do a giveaway on your blog or on your Instagram. So what I was able to do was I was able to drive more traffic 
for people to obviously purchase these really cute items from these brands, giving them exposure, but it also helped me out in return because I would tell people like, in order to win this giveaway, make sure you follow me on like Instagram and like my blog. And so I started building a following from just what I had. And it really gave me content. So that's what I loved was I couldn't go out and afford the craziest handbags and up, I couldn't afford to update my wardrobe every other day for my blog. I was getting tons of product. So I was able to create content on my blog and that really helped me to be persistent and to kind of stay on it. I'm really glad I came up with that idea. It was really genius at the time because nobody was really doing that. And then eventually what happened was I, I started getting emails from different agencies that you know represented just like bloggers. And by agencies, I don't mean like a manager, a traditional agent that represents you. I was working with multiple agencies at once, non-exclusively. Um, and, and, and basically they would submit me for little campaign deals here and there. I remember the first campaign I got was with Target. And it's crazy because now I still work with Target. And to see how I've grown with that brand from the beginning, it's incredible. About two years ago, I knew that it was time to rebrand because I started you know, putting myself in more posts and I started just sharing more personal stuff. At this point, I had really built an intimate relationship with my audience. I wanted to create a space where women could come and feel inspired. And in my relationship with Steve, as we were talking about marriage and I was thinking like, my audience doesn't even know I have a boyfriend. Like they didn't even know anything, you know? When I rebranded to Cezanne, I knew that that was the perfect opportunity to just be completely transparent with my readers. And so that's exactly what I did. And the more I was open about things in my life like that, the more I noticed my blog was starting to transition. Remember when I told you guys I felt like I was giving up my hosting career? Um, I got an opportunity where like the producers at E! reached out to me and they were like, hey, we think you'd be great to do this um, E! Fashion Police segment with like bloggers about like the SAG Awards or whatever, or the Emmys, I'm sorry. And I was just like, what? That's like, that's like my dream. Like, are you serious? Of course, hands down, I went for it. And so I decided to do this thing with like Kat Sadler. And it was just like, I was just literally like, this is what I always wanted. Like, this is crazy. It was one of those moments. It was a really fun and exciting opportunity. But the second I left, I felt it in my heart. And I said to myself, like, wow, like that was really fun, but it doesn't compare to how much joy I have doing my blog and my YouTube channel, like what I'm doing today, basically. And in a way, it just showed me that God never meant to take away anything from me. Like God knew I wanted more than anything was to be a host and to have that moment, like an opportunity. And so the fact that like I did several TV things after I had my successful blog, I realized why God did what he did because blogging has been so much more fulfilling and having my own platform where I can produce what I want to showcase. I can tell stories how I want to tell them and I can inspire people just face to face like this. I know that that path has been way more enjoyable than probably the TV path would have ever been for me. But the truth is, is like, I love what I do. I don't look back and say like, ugh, I could have, should have, would have, and I should have done this and I could have done that. And no, like, I'm so glad that I was faithful and I, I listened to God and I was just like, okay, fine, like I'll do this. And it was a lot of hard work, but you guys, it is so worth it. So as many of you guys know, YouTube came along way after my blog and it was a whole new space. I was intimidated, even though I was a radio TV film graduate, I didn't get how YouTube worked. It's It wasn't like doing a stand up and you're reporting live. I mean, it was just really casual and for me, I had to learn to relax and to lighten up and to show my personality. Look at old videos on my channel and you can just see like there's like no personality in my eyes. I'm just like, hey guys, what's up? Today I'm gonna show you how to do this, this, this. And so I look back at that and I'm like, OMG girl, practice makes perfect. Now as many of you guys know, I'm in the process of transitioning. Um, you know, I'm always transitioning, but in the business world, I'm starting to open up my doors to new ventures. A really exciting thing is coming and I'm not gonna lie, I do feel a little nervous about it because anytime I feel like a blogger or a digital influencer launches something, 
a lot of the time you just get so much criticism from people that like just don't always take you seriously as a businesswoman. I've done countless seminars and panels and conferences just trying to educate people about what it is that I do and how I got how I got started and the fact that like this is a full-time job. It's a lot more than taking selfies and it really isn't easy. A lot of the times people don't take us seriously as business people and that's kind of an insecurity that I've had going into this next season of launching something really fun and exciting is how are people gonna respond? And I think everybody kind of has that fear when they're stepping into something new and exciting. That's a whole new world coming. So I'm sure I'm gonna have so much more advice that I can share from jumping into that, that world and putting my business hat on. So I hope that you guys continue to follow along and I hope that this video didn't bore you. I hope you're still awake out there, hello. But real quick, if any of you out there have been feeling just defeated, if you've been feeling overwhelmed, if you've been feeling just anxious and pressured, just know that like I'm there with you 100%. I've been there. I still sometimes experience those things. With success comes tons of patience and you are tested a million different ways, but just know that after every trial and tribulation comes the result of growth. And I truly have seen that in my own career. I've seen it in fellow bloggers and really close friends that are super successful. I've heard them talk about it. We are living in an age where the internet is so powerful and you can reach so many thousands and thousands and millions of people. So I totally say jump and go for it. You guys know I'm really passionate about helping people and like especially girls who are in the same industry. I definitely think that like we all have to stick together in this field. Like just because one girl has a million followers and another girl has say 10,000 on her blog, that doesn't mean that one girl is better than the other or more successful than the other. It's not about the number today. Like it is all about the engagement. And so one girl who might have 10,000 versus the girl with a million, she may have the audience that is super ride or die. So always keep that in mind when you compare yourself because you are unique and you are your own person. You don't have to be living in Los Angeles to have a successful blog. You just have to stay motivated, you have to stay patient, and every single day you have to water what it is that you want to grow. You can't be afraid to put yourself out there and to um, market yourself, like you really, have to stay humble, but also be persistent and really believe that you have what it takes. And if you guys have any questions, I want you to take this time and this opportunity to comment below and just share your questions, whatever it is. I'm gonna read some of them and comment back to as many as I can, I promise you. It's not about the fame, it's not about the followers, it's not about the free products. For me, it's about the purpose and why I'm here, knowing that like, God put me on this path for a reason and I just want to be a light to anybody that I can and to use my platform to inspire people, to influence people, to be a voice for other people and that's kind of where I'm at today and I can truly say that I'm really proud of where I am. I'm literally about to cry. Um, it's because like I've had so many days where I just like want to give up. I've had so many people telling me like you're not going to be successful and i even told myself that and so to sit here today and to share my story and how i got started like it's just it's all come full circle for me and i'm just like so grateful that like god has just kept me on the right path because living out here as a Middle Eastern girl who doesn't really have very many fellow Middle Eastern influencers to look up to when I came out here. I felt like I wanted, I want to be that for other girls, especially for the girls that have any cultural barriers who are constantly being told like, you can't do this, you're not gonna make it. Like whether it's from your parents or from friends or from teachers, whoever it is, like, let me be the first person to tell you like you can do it and you will do it and you're going to be the person that nobody thought you're gonna be Woo! it just got real up in here i hope that you guys really receive that and i hope that you leave this video feeling confident feeling inspired to just go out there and chase whatever it is that has been holding you back i love 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 you guys and until my next video come over here Mwah. Bye, my loves.